Alright, uh, hello everyone. This is going to be the first part in a series of tutorials that will teach you how to program a robot for, you know, first robotics competition. Um, you should be, you should have followed first, you know, the, the instructions that let you install Eclipse and install the, all the development tools. So you should be opening Eclipse and, and come to this screen where you have your package explorer, which might be empty for you, um, and just uh, an empty screen. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a project. So if you right click here, hit new project, and then you're going to go down to WPI lib Drova, uh, robot Java development and hit example robot Java project, or um, sorry, robot Java project. You're going to enter in your team number, which is uh, 4795 if you're watching from the eSpots. Uh, might be something else um, if you know, you're watching this from a different team. Uh, next there's kind of different types of robots. The type that we'll almost always be using is um, command-based robot. This is very um, object-oriented structured. Uh, an iterative or sample robot are kind of just, um, you know, like a single file or you build your own structure, whereas command is structured on its own. Uh, it kind of comes with that built-in structure. So we're going we're gonna to go with that. It's um, a lot cleaner. Uh, helps a lot. So, uh, you know, you hit command-based robot. The simulation world doesn't really uh, matter much. I've never used it. It's kind of it's difficult to use, uh, and we're gonna give it a project name. You can name it whatever you want. Um, for now, I'll call it tutorial. But uh, a naming convention I've always uh, had is um, you know name of the game dash year. So for example, this year it'd be Power Up 2018 or Steamworks 2017, something like that. But for now, I'm gonna do tutorial uh, just to show you. So. Once we make this, uh, you can scroll down, ignore these up here, those are my different Java projects, but if you go down here and go, you can open it up and it'll expand, showing you kind of the different files that you have. Um, and you can go to source, and then there's different packages. Uh, hopefully, you know what packages are if you've seen, you know, done some Java, which is kind of a prerequisite to programming a robot, but basically they're just like, you know, categories to put your files in. So, um, I'm going to walk through kind of what each of these uh, files does. So, output input, which is OI, uh, is where all of your, um, you know, joystick reading code, uh, etc. will go. And it's like, um, where are you going to store all of that? Like, where are you going to store all the objects for, you know, your joysticks or jo objects for your buttons, uh, methods for, you know, giving out joystick uh, information. Um, robot is going to be where, uh, you know, it's kind of like if you programmed a job before, it's, it's your main class. It's where everything starts. Robot in it is called when your robot turns on. Um, disabled in it, or um, sorry, autonomous in it starts when, you, when your autonomous first starts. Autonomous periodic runs periodically during autonomous. Uh, same thing for teleop in it and teleop periodic. So this is where, you know, you're going to run all your code from and where you're going to initialize all your subsystems. Now, subsystems and commands are the two ways that the robot um, like you know works subsystems contain all your objects for your motor controllers and all your base methods that help you interface with those um, motor controllers uh, so for example this example subsystem doesn't have much in it but um, and basically you're just gonna have all of your functions for controlling a subsystem if you have your drive base for example that'll have all the motors for the drive base and how to drive them we're gonna be building a drive base subsystem uh, in a few tutorials or the next tutorial and then um, you'll kind of get a better understanding of it. Uh, an example uh, and a command is something that you do with your subsystems. So for example tank drive, if you're making a tank drive um, a drive base, a tank drive command can you know say hey get the inputs from the joysticks and move either my left and right side depending on which joystick I'm moving. So these are just a way for you know the, the robot to know what am I doing right now. For example, autonomous uh, uh, algorithms will use commands. So that way, you know, you can program your robot. You can have a command that drives forward five feet and then turns 90 degrees, and then that would be a, a command that you can run through the scheduler. Um, and we'll get into the scheduler when we talk about autonomous later. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basic structure. But right now we have this, um, you know, th this empty project, but there's a lot of uh, un like not useful code here that we can get rid of to kind of make it um, a little bit more easy easy to work with. So the first thing you're going to want to do is delete all these comments. Um, so I, I just don't like 
having all these uh, cluttered uh, comments. Also, if you do Control Shift F, it'll automatically format your file. This is really important. It it keeps your code clean. Um, so I would always do Control Shift F, you know, uh, whenever you can. All these comments are kind of um, useless if if you already know what you're doing and they clutter your code. So I I would just go through and remove all of them. See, there's very obvious functions like. Autonomous periodic, this function is called periodically during autonomous. Not very helpful, so if we just clear it out, it'll be a little bit easier to read. Control shift F. So, uh, I, I would keep the copyright notice though. Um, then we go to OI, similar thing. This is just trying to teach you how to use it, but if you're following the tutorial, you won't need it, so I, I, would, I would remove it. Um, and then for example command and example subsystem, we're going to delete those because they're not actually that useful. Um, but you'll notice when you delete them, and I, I oh, do not delete the package. Um, once you delete them, also in some uh, jobs it'll ask you, in some Eclipse uh, versions, it'll ask you if you want to delete it on disk. Definitely delete it on disk. Do not leave it on your disk. Um, but once we do that, you'll notice robot.java gets a lot of errors because the, the example subsystems are being used. So we're going to clear those out and make sure we have an empty project to work with. So um, first of all, you're going to want to like open up your imports and delete your, the two imports for um, the example command and example subsystem. Uh, I would delete uh, this as well. It's causing an error. A really helpful tip with Eclipse. If you push Control D, it'll delete a line. So you can just go through all of these and delete the line. And there you go. You have a, a pretty much an empty project. Uh, just this is just a very personal thing. I would also rename this just to OI. Uh, that's just a personal thing. I would delete this autonomous command and this chooser as well. Um, rename this to OI. Delete the smart dashboard chooser. I, I would delete all of all of that. Uh, we'll be getting into how to do autonomous. I don't like particularly like doing the autonomous chooser, um, but. Yeah, so it's very bare bones right now. Uh, yeah, you don't need any of these. I would keep. I would keep some. Of the, I would keep all these imports though. I, w I would keep all these imports just for when we um, when we're making more code. So right now it's very bare bones, but this is a project that you can put whatever you want into, uh, and you know in the following tutorials we'll we'll get right into it. But right now you have an empty project. You can put any code you want. It's not cluttered, uh, and you kind of learn the basics of how to create a project. So. So thank you uh, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next uh, episode.